So we're going to start bridging the nose deep away from the nose, pointing towards the eye, and then bring it up shallow. Shallow, shallow. Over here it's the opposite because we're going to we're creating chips like a chip carving. Very shallow, then you're going deep and deep and deep to get the bridge. And then this is a, a just a generally medium regular cut. Okay, I'm going to do the same here while I got my knife. I'm going to do kind of medium cut here. And then now at the bridge, now we're pointing away from the brow towards the eye. We're always pointing towards the eye, so sharp and then shallow. The reason why we want shallow here is because if you cut too deep, then you got to really carve to get that out of there. And then I'm going to move around, and this is going to go, we're going to start kind of shallow. Deep, deep, deep. Okay, so now we're going to start our first chip from here to here. And it's going to do the, it's going to do a shallow, deep, shallow. Shallow, deep, but very shallow up here, and it should, my favorite word, that first chip should pop up. Now it doesn't matter, you can take as many cuts as you want. See, that broke on me, so that's fine. Like that. And then from here, it's going to be halfway up the nose, and I'm going to straight down to this line. So it's like shallow, deep, 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 deep. And here, shallow, deep, deep. You get deeper as you go. Same here. Shallow to deep to shallow. Should pop out. About middle of the nose-ish. Deep, deep, until you meet this. Okay. Now we can you can keep re, you can repeat the process if you want the nose to come out more and or the eyes to go back. Now I'm going to do just a quick from shallow just at the bridge here. Shallow right to the eye. As soon as I get to the eye line, stop. Same over here. Start shallow, go deep, deep, deep till you get to the eye line. And there's your profile. Okay, now we can start shaping. Where's my pencil? Now the eye, no, wait, before I shape, I want to do one more. I want to, let's go a little deeper. Because we want to make sure that the eye socket is relatively as deep as you want. I mean, you still can have some adjustments here and there. Maybe a little bit of clean. And before we do move on, I just want to cut a 45 right here. Cut a little bit of that, probably a little bit of that cheek. About 45. Cheek. Just to kind of get started. That's when we started playing with the beard and mustache. It'd be nice to have that in there. You want to cut a little bit, that's get a little, get the pencils off, I don't care. All right. Now, where was I? The ear is, uh, starts at the center of the face. Can I do this with you looking at it here? So I'm going to do it first. So the ear is going to be, now the ear does, the ear, the ear does move forward. Am I right? Right, yeah. So halfway between here and here, and, and the back now, there's going of the skull, but we got to remember there's some hair there. So that's about half. And the and the ear is going to be just above the eyebrow, this particular character. And it's go below the nose. And it's going to go about here. Yeah, I think we'll shape the the shoulder a little bit and give a little bit of the ear because the ear does, we're lucky, the ear does go in this way. Same with on the other side. Now I like uh, what some of the carvers do, they like to measure. Is that going to work for us? 
wonder if that's going to work for us, but it's supposed to go out. Let's see, let's see if we can compare between here and here. Make sure that does look like it's right on. And then here is where the back is going to be. Always making sure there's more, more ear that we can use. Because what's going to happen when we start playing with the face is that uh, it's going to be a block. And then when we're ready to play with the ear, because see the other thing too is we might straighten this out a little bit. So let's get a little more ear in there, a little more height of the ear. Looks like I have too much there. Well, all right. And I am going to take my chisel and just, now remember, I want to cut so I still leave the pencil mark. Don't cut on the pencil mark, just leave, cut, or there's going to be some pencil mark left. Did I make that go forward? Yeah, I did or go back where the bottom is forward. Just enough to leave some wood so we can play with that later. Because what's going to happen, now we can start playing with the face and the, fa the head. And the head's going to come in. Let's cut a little more of that hat there so we can... I said the head is going to be, we're going to have the mustache. Of course, I always like the happy Santa mustache, and of course, he's always a happy note. I still have a little bit of problem. It's a good thing that, it, that these things are character, but I still have a little bit of a problem of having the face or the head too big. And it's okay, but I just, I would... Still trying to learn how to make it come out the way exactly that I want it. That's the point. I'll just cut some of that. But don't get too... Still leave some of the line. I went past the line. Leave some of that line because we do want... We still want them to have a uh, sideburn there. So that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of doing the chip and weight process. That's what I do with a lot of, like I look at some people, if I ever did their cutouts or rough outs or something. And if you put what I just did with the go by or picture, it doesn't look, well, it looks something like it. You know, that's what I was trying to carve. But in the in the long run, if I take the go-by or picture away and I look directly at the carving, if it looks very good, or if other people say it looks very good, then that's good. But there's still that. I still would like to, whatever I have in mind, I would like for it to happen. So I'm still in that process, and that's, that comes with practice. And, and it also comes with taking one carving and carving it again, and then carving it again. And again, and again. There's one, uh, I think one story told, I, I don't want to tell the name right now, it was a video of a old world Santa way back when, and I carved his, and it's good, good carving and all, nothing against it. And I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to add this. And what if I were to subtract this where you can still see that? And what if, and I kept going and changing, and it was like about 10 years later, going through some old Chip Chat magazine, and lo and behold, there he was. 
and he had some of his, his samples there for his video and oh my goodness you couldn't even tell them you couldn't even tell that they were basically related take my carving and his carving and that's all I did and and I just changed this and did that and all of a sudden it became my carving you probably could guess that maybe there is the possibility that I learned from him but it's that's how you really learn is you just keep changing and fixing and altering and now like I said I want to get some sideburns in there make sure we got some well not sideburns well let's put the let's get the mustache in and it's kind of interesting how things are changing already. See how far away the hand is from the mustache? See where the hand is with the mustache. And that's still good. Because I want to change, I did want to change this. I am, I wanted this to be more forward. But again, we may end up taking a lot of that hand off. But I'm not sure yet. In fact, I'm almost sure. Actually, to tell you the truth, I am sure. I want to take some of that hand off. Because there's this, so therefore. So I want to take a little bit of that hand off so we could uh, work with the mustache. Just a little bit of that hand off there. So in other words, the hand is just a wee bit smaller than the sleeve. And of course, I again, I don't want to throw too many names out there, but uh, if you ever have a chance to learn, it's a once a year class from Marv Kaiserstadt, Fairbolt, Minnesota. Look him up. I just finished his class. It's a week long. He's got two, two of them, in which one is a design class. You have a they give you a wire and some clay, and you actually come up, you start with having an idea of what you want. I had this idea of a Civil War baseball player, because they did a lot of fraternizing back in those days. The, the ball player was going to be Union, and then the catcher would be Confederate. But if you ever did, and you, what you do is you start from... You start from a, a clay cutout and you work your way to get the, in fact, uh, from the clay on the first day you'll have it clayed up and you will have it, um, uh, Chris Willock is there and he and Willock Studio is where it is and uh, he will have the cutout before the end of the first day. And then by the second day, as you're going to take a second and third days, you're going to take a lot of wood off and and uh, he, uh, he he downloads everything. If you have ever look uh, look him up and his carvings is his carvings are absolutely positively phenomenal. We get people all over. We got some of the. We always have a, a good representation from the folks from the southern states. Come up. We got. Uh, Usually have some representations from Canadian, the Canadians, eh? They come down, eh? And it is just, you need just look them up, and if you ever can get a chance, it's usually in uh, May. And then he also has another class, it's just a figure class. He has a, uh, uh, put the mustache in here. He, he has a character already ready, and it's a cutout. It's still a week long, but he really you unload and you have practice sticks and pra or practice you have a practice blocks and show you how to do the heads and faces and oh my goodness he gives you a complete dump memory dump of what he knows and on top of that every Thursday uh, after lunch well every Thursday every I've, I've been like I said I've been to both classes mm -hmm. 